Welcome to another episode of Houston Art Tribe. I am here with Renata Lucia in her home studio and really happy to be here and really happy that she lives just two blocks away from me. <laughs> <laughs> it is, well, again, no secret how I feel about your work. I just have always been inspired with each new thing you take on. I'm amazed at how you explore, which I think is the very definition of what an artist does. And I think it was the um, vintage paintings or collages or... It was actually, it started as a collage series that morphed into encaustic paintings. Yeah, I yeah. thought so. I'm, talk about that a little bit. I was absolutely fascinated with the story behind these. Um, <clears throat> well, um, it really started when um, I did a, a short summer residency at Project Row Houses and I was thinking of what I could do for that project. It was supposed to be interactive and, you know, kind of uh, using the neighborhood around me. And oh, so I started okay. ga gathering a lot of found objects mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. And I found amazing things and amazing photographs. And um, I've always had an interest in quilts. That's in, yeah. in my family lineage of crafters. I love that. And uh, I wanted to use uh, quilt language, yes, right? Because there's yes. meanings in those and yes. the textile references and just patterns themselves and their names. Yeah. And so I started assembling uh, found objects into small paper collages that were also embroidered to represent quilt patterns. Yeah. And, um, and also like a big installation that was just found objects themselves. Yeah. But once one particular portion of that uh, output for that residency were these small paper collages that were in uh, okay. quilt patterns. But it was really dependent to carry that forward, dependent yeah. on finding the things, and I was cutting them up, yeah. right, and yeah. using them. And if I can't find a cool thing yeah. that I wanted to, that was meaningful to me, that was happened to be laying on the ground, <laughs> then I was a little flummoxed. Yeah, that limits it. Yeah. Yeah, and so um, what happened was I, I found in a Houston thrift shop, I found this old um, um, photo album yeah. that was falling apart yeah. of someone's. Um, photographs that it was clear to me from the age of the photographs that this person's estate yeah that they were no longer with us in their yes. estate of intent. and I, when I went to purchase them <clears throat> at the search store which is no longer there they started they started throwing away the photographs because they thought that I wanted this old messed up photo oh album and I, no. oh my gosh <laughs> oh my, yeah that's yeah. the important part that yeah <laughs> and um and I took that opportunity too. Like I wanted to use those, and um, I had been uh, playing around with encaustic specifically yeah. for image transfer properties. Mm -hmm. And so when I combined that, um, I didn't have to cut up the photographs, right? Mm -hmm. I could use them in multiples, which helped me to to create quilt images and use it in the encaustic properties, yeah. both for paint and translucency and which is you know yeah. all that. Although. Yeah. I, it meant I was kind of doing hard-edged encaustic, which is kind of dumb, but um, the, <laughs> I have no, <laughs> idea. Work. no idea. It doesn't want to be straight. It wants to flow like, oh, okay. you know, oh, gosh. like watercolor. It's okay. actually, it's, there's a weird equivalency, Yeah. I think, with watercolor. Like getting the heat just right is kind of like getting the water just right in watercolor. Oh. So, it's like, and so I did a whole, like one show, and, and actually I kept going too, around that photo album. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And just using, uh, there were a ton of images and using them in different ways. Oh, okay. And um, I've since then, I'm still, I'm actually, you can't tell because <laughs> of what I've been showing, but I'm actually still kind of working on that series. Oh, and I yeah. have I'm other photos from other people. <clears throat> yeah, oh, I'm so. glad because to me it was so touching when you talked about uh, that. And previously we talked about this with the the woman in some of these photos with the bouffant hair and the go-go mm -hmm. boots is, and I just uh, it's almost as if you're sort of uh, invoking that, that that woman to come to life and giving her a, 
a permanence somehow mm -hmm. where people throw out old photo albums and it just it's kind of sad yeah I mean know? it's a kind of that idea of you know those were somebody's treasures yeah and uh, I mean I don't that's I guess I'm a little overly sentimental, I, but, I love you know, I like kind of, it's kind of like, I think I said an echo of an echo, but you're kind of yeah, celebrating them in a way, which yeah. quilts are kind of celebratory True. when you make quilts. Yes. And, um, although I was also told they're, they're a little... Um, I hear a meow. They, oh, <laughs> Go I on. know, no. always the critic. <laughs> Yeah. Meow. I don't think it's celebratory. I think it's sad. <laughs> I have something to say. <laughs> oh, I love it. No, but uh, I love that you you went there with that and and oh, and then they're just imagery themselves, the, the visuals that, that that they created, the patterns of quilt. You mm -hmm. know, sort of. I, and with I the mean, encaustic, you can carve it a little bit. Okay. So, which Help depending me. on what pattern I use, sometimes they almost look a little puffy. Like a quilt, yeah, they you had know, a, the, a little raised, bit of tiny yeah. sculptural quality. Yeah. They don't photograph well, though. Oh, they look uh, cool. that would be, yeah, that would be an issue, I guess. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. But, uh, yeah, I have a, I have uh, some photographs from another person, and then I've got quite a few photographs that I've received directly from someone's estate. Someone oh, okay, else. okay. So, yeah. And I think I've only done one piece uh, with those, and I sold it right away. <laughs> Like, <laughs> They're time-consuming too, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. So I haven't done it. So I need to do a whole series around this other person, ah, basically. Yeah. The one that I have the most photographs of. What I think is interesting too is that because you do explore other ways of expressing yourself through different medias, you know, it just it just has to add to when you revisit something, you know. And I don't know what you stepped into next, but I, I keep wanting to say that it was, you played it with the news versus nature thing sort of off and on too, didn't you? I, mm -hmm. see, I'm, I'm not yeah, because I think I started that in two th the series in 2011, mm -hmm. and I okay. did it for, for uh, whoops, sorry, it might have been 2009, I think it was 2011. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, and I started, but I didn't, uh, I haven't always been good over the years. I have, I have, let me back up. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> I just read something um, last night about that there's going to be a show of Lee Krasner. Oh. And the, the, oh. Uh, coming up. Oh, and, wow. And um, I forget where, but there was this great description. They were like, not only was she kind of overshadowed by being Jackson Pollock's oh, wife. Oh, gosh, yeah, yeah. But uh, that she suffered from being eclectic. In her output, and I was like, "There you go! <laughs> what a great description!" <laughs> Me. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, oh, that's great. I love that. That's so, I've thing. always kind of been interested in all these different. Yeah, yeah. Directions. Oh, and, uh, it's part of the fun. Of I think it is. I like. I, I mean this. I really think it. It well describes what it is to be an artist. Just uh, finding ways to express you know, in different media. It doesn't mean you have to, but I mm -hmm. love that you do that. And certainly not a weakness. It's a it's a big plus, <laughs> I think. But do you want to talk about the news versus nature oh, sure. a bit? And yeah, then we yeah. can jump around to some other things too. Um, I started it when I was feeling, I was feeling a little down about the news. <sighs> and the news, when I started, was a little different than it is now. Oh yeah, yeah. Right, and so, I, you know, I did quite a few. Uh, I didn't show them very much. I wasn't mm -hmm. always, there have been different times when I wasn't great about getting things out of my studio. Mm. And, uh, but I was part of the, the Art Chatter Critique Group. Yes. That we were in. Yes. Yeah. Uh, are in together. Yeah. And um, I brought them to critique and there was a big kerfuffle Basically, like I, I got a brutal critique. Oh Like, no. how are you going to show them? They're on newspaper, and you know, oh like, my right gosh. and uh, it was pretty harsh. Oh actually. my gosh! Was I there? <laughs> you were there. Not only were you there, I must have been stunned. What? What? Tell me. You. That was when you pulled me aside after oh. that critique. Okay. My friend Kay. Okay. Pulled me aside and said, "I think you have something really special here." Oh, good. And that compliment, right, and that encouragement, mm. you know, from the right person at the right time, yeah, led me to 
submit them to New American Paintings. Oh, which my was God. the next thing I had coming up. And yeah. I actually got you those got yeah. into New American Paintings. Yeah. Right, and so, and then I showed, I think I, I did one local show in Houston with him. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, I oh, say. sure. I mean, you know, uh, that, that encouragement, because who knows, because I do pick things up and put them down quite a, sure, quite a bit sure. and let them percolate in my mind. Yeah. And, you think, know, that kind of caused me to keep going. Good. But um, <laughs> yeah. I, th I think I had a, I had a run with those, and then I put mm -hmm. them down for a bit, and I mm -hmm. went on to other things. And yeah. then... We had the politics yeah. start to burble up in the last presidential election, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of news. Yes. And so I started picking them up again. Yeah. And uh, because for me, it's, you know, kind of a commentary on the, the divide that we're in. Yes. And I should say, too, this is kind of funny, but... Um, also, I was a high school newspaper editor. Little known fact. <laughs> wow, isn't that, wow. So, that's and I, I love the texture of newspaper. So I've yes. always kind of been, you know, wow. into news in general. Yeah. Although yeah. now the series kind of weighs <laughs> on me a little bit. Because you're like, oh my God, I've got to go get a newspaper. Something just happened. <laughs> and then I was yeah. like, oh, I can't. By the New York Times every day with... It's All really hard. things going on. It's really hard, yeah. But it was inspired by a Sherman Alexi author who wrote a collection of... He's, he's written a lot of things, but this oh. collection of short stories called Tonto and the Lone Ranger, Fist Fight in Heaven. Oh, okay. So I started thinking of the news as kind of this abstract thing, yeah. right? Yeah. This character in a way, yeah. versus nature. Yes. And when I first started, I thought... In a way, nature was the good thing. Nature is what really is, and news was yes, was yes. you know that's human great. beings and our yeah. kind of like all our manufactured social norms and civilization yes. and all this, right? Yes. Maybe not always great with the civilization, but anyway, uh, that they were in this this battle, yeah, this tussle, and I assumed that nature was going to reign, reign supreme. When I picked it up again the second time, I started thinking maybe nature was not. Not so great. Maybe oh. maybe nature was human nature not at its best, you know, yes. like us yeah. kind of devolving into our baser Gosh. instincts and news was kind yeah. of like what the real thing was in the world and Wow. And we're hearing like of all kinds of things. And you know what's happening. Yeah. Right. Yes. In the world sometimes, or maybe it is happening to you. Maybe it is the thing happening affecting you. But yeah. sometimes, um, I mean maybe I should back up and say just the like if we pick up the paper right now mm -hmm. right that there is a, a psychological toll there is that we there absorb is. from reading all these things this weight and so, so true so maybe I know. maybe i should say that um i should have started with the fact that in a way it was kind of a way to deal with that I, I, psychological I toll so. and that's what's really neat about well as an artist you know you found a way to sort of deal and by expressing this, I think, or I don't know, maybe there isn't a healing in it for you, but maybe there is. I think that, I think there's yeah. a little bit of catharsis and healing, yeah. and I think that uh, with some people, you know, it like it resonates with them as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Something to do with that, and maybe I should say too, like the other thing, like how did I go from quilts to <laughs> news versus nature? But uh, I actually uh, one of my big loves is pattern. Right, and okay. I see pattern as both stable patterns and chaotic patterns. Okay. And um, this relates to an earlier series I had with with the the nature portion being uh, predicated, developed from crumple patterns. Yes, where I'm yes. crumpling the paper, yes, right? Yes. And so, and that's fractal. And okay. fractal patterns are like what create mountain ranges for yes, example yes yes or yeah. clouds or yeah. like many other things yes and so uh that's why sometimes the or most of the time the news versus nature when they're working properly almost look like an aerial view mm -hmm. of like some kind of organic folding structure or sometimes they mountain, mountain ranges yeah. and i liked that um that that kind of shoots you away from the paper visually maybe kind of detaches yeah. you a bit whereas you can go in and read you know what's happening because I picked that newspaper page for a reason wow. there's things on there that I was trying to highlight so yeah. it's like doing this push and pull that I think works with this oh, that's great that is genius really yeah. <laughs>
But it makes you think when you mentioned that, that you've done the crumpled paper, uh, there were paintings that you did uh, that had these amazing colors. Um, I, I don't know if the series had a name or, but I remember uh, I those being. I think it did. Yeah, think my, it did. yeah my friend uh, Lisa Marie Hunter curated me okay. into a show at uh, Dummy Books called Prismatac. Oh, okay. Specifically for those, it was a very psychedelic colored. Oh yeah, they're they're vibrant. really fun. That and was a good looking show. Was they were great. I, Back uh, I was gonna uh, bring up another thing that you worked on, um, which was um, these sort of embroidered. Uh, it was like about gerrymandering uh, maps, um, which I think you call them penny squares, or is that? Um, the whole, yeah, the whole series was called Red Work. Red Work, Which yes. was like a double entendre for um, uh, political machinations of gerrymandering, perhaps. <laughs> and, uh, but it was also a reference to uh, an old vintage, specifically, style of embroidery that was used to make quilts. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, um, yeah kind of. Bring that back a little bit, and individually yeah. penny squares. Yeah, was a little bit. So my work took a bit of a political turn <laughs> in the past few years. I mean, like a kind of hard not to. Right. <laughs> Even when you think you aren't, you know, you're going there. So I penny like squares uh, could be purchased yeah, for a yeah. penny for embroidery. So when when was that period that, like that the, they sold them like that? Was I think that it was in the early. Uh, uh, 19, uh, like 1920s to 1930s when they were being sold yeah. in the U.S. Yeah. Um, and the whole, like, red work itself, even, like, so the, the, the purchased ones were pre-printed, so you could just embroider them. Oh, okay. That's what I mean by purchasing them. Okay. And then from, but from the 1860s to the 1930s, um, both in Europe and the U.S., I believe they were in use. And uh -huh. one of the things about this was it was a kind of a middle to lower class. Yeah, thing to do. Mm -hmm. it had, so it has like a class okay. commentary because it wasn't fine silk. You know, oh. it was like cheaper fabric, like okay. the easily accessible fabric, and, and cotton thread, red cotton thread. Yeah. So it's right. like red, and it, it's not filled in. It's not ornate. It's one stitch. It's yeah. outlining, yes, you know, wow. basically, and it was sometimes used for political commentary, like um, um, prohibition okay. things, and okay. so, and it was primarily women's point of view yes. being expressed in this. So, anyway, wow. so I, I kind of like rolled that all together into. Uh, that makes it all the stronger <laughs> now, knowing that. Except that. Um, you know, I'm still thinking about how to present that series, yeah. basically, and it is so uh, it, old in a way that it's hard to, like, I kind of have to to yeah. communicate all the meaning. It's actually oh. very, it's very loaded. It is. But it's not something that you get from just looking at it, so i Well, I think because of the subject out. matter, like, just, just off the top of my head, that it's enough for people but once they if they just if they're interested and they want to deep a little for mm -hmm. you know dive a little further wow that just even takes it there completely it just makes sense if you bought them and you sewed them into quilts and so i'm like I do know. i need to make an actual quilt maybe oh, i don't know Ooh. um and so i kind of had to put that down for a little right, bit right right while i got ready for a show of yes, these, but yes, I... Yes. Speaking of, you know, doing really uh, creative things, oh. I'm not... Uh, Hold <laughs> it. <laughs> the, this thing that you've been doing uh, called Inktober, which I don't really know what's behind that, but they're delightful uh, uh, drawings. And um, you've just been sharing one every day. Is that a challenge of some kind? Or is it, it is. A, I mean, I think it's more... Um, it's... Uh, maybe more focused towards illustrators uh which okay. which are awesome artists illustrators so like yeah. to, to and you know uh working up those skills and ink because yes. that's primarily yeah i think how how they present their work but yeah. it's i mean the the rules are i don't so i don't think it matters okay like okay. uh that it came uh, <clears throat> maybe from that from that bent but the rules were that you had to do a drawing every day which is fine. Yeah, I like should, to draw every day. I should, should be, be doing that anyway. But sometimes yeah. things happen and, <clears throat> yeah. you know, you don't. Yeah. But uh, but to post it on social media and hashtag it. So, yeah. 
for me to to do something every day <clears throat> that I was willing to share. Yes, um, yes, yes. It's been a little bit tricky, and I was so uncomfortable with it. Oh. It was, it's been kind of horrifying. Uh, I'm so uncomfortable with it. They, clearly, it was a good thing to do, right? Because, yeah, I mean, yeah. how dumb is it that, that you know, I like, know. I don't want to share my work? No, yeah. I need to, you know. But yeah. just the fact that I was so uncomfortable made me think, I've got it. I've got I to know. do it. Yeah. And, I, you know, I love to draw. And yeah. it's something, you know, it was like getting out yield drawing skills and yeah. dusting them off. <laughs> because that is one of those things that yes. I've had to go up and down <clears throat> with over the years because you just, you get rusty. Yes, you and, do. Yeah. You know, oh, totally. you gotta, you gotta work it. And so much of the time, uh, when I am working on different series, is, uh -huh. you know, I'm working abstractly or working in a boardry or whatever, but yeah. my, my identity, I'm not being judgy on anyone else, no. but, but my identity of being an artist does include being able to draw. Yeah, and being I think drawing, draw well. God, it's, it's, uh, it's just understated how important it is. I think I, I've seen a lot on that mm -hmm. recently, uh, some people speaking out about how important drawing is. But love that you challenge yourself and put yourself in your not your comfort zone a bit because i think that we all need to ex be comfortable a, a little bit with exposing what we do and yeah, you're really and, fine and you know, the first them. night i put up cat sketches i was like i'm gonna take that down in the morning <laughs> i met the letter of this challenge I didn't that's actually good enough <laughs> Oh, and yeah, and that's the other thing. It's like mostly they're going up around midnight <laughs> <laughs> because that was where the time, because, you know, the other things I've been working on, yeah. you know, still had to get worked on. So what happened yes. was I was giving up like, basically an hour or so at night of reading before oh, I go yeah. to bed yeah. has been replaced almost this month. I've almost made it like a, it was 27th oh or 28th or something. Almost there. Almost wow. to pencil member. <laughs> Yay! Is it really? <laughs> no. I made that up. <laughs> but like, racing! Yes! That's right. <laughs> well, it's funny, too, when you get in the habit of something, like they say, for 30 days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or whatever. Um, I mean, I've always kind of loved landscape stuff, too. Yeah. And I think this is, you know, it's inevitably inevitable I think it's going to pull I me in another so. direction I've yeah. been thinking about the environment and yes. what can yeah. I do yeah. project wise about and again it's those you know, patterns in nature it's true and, yeah. and god what could be more intriguing in a way uh, and maybe that's part of the healing process too is focusing on this versus the news <laughs> I did think of that as well yeah it was like it's true. I have to go draw a flower now. It's like that inner conflict. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should all go draw a flower now, you know, on every level, you know. Right. But I guess what I would like to ask you is uh, what what you have coming up. Well, <laughs> I have um, a solo show at the Galveston Art Center coming up. Yay. Um, it's November 24th. It seems so far away, but it's not. It's coming up. It seems far away and close yeah. at the same time, but it's the, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Yes. So um, it's part of the... Going to be worth it. Yeah. And are you still calling it News versus Nature, or is there it's, something... Well, the, so the News versus Nature pieces always have, like, a something in parentheses that's from that page. Okay. okay. Like, that um, identifies okay. them. Okay. Like, News okay. versus nature, inquiry, yeah. or, you know, rallies, yeah. or whatever. <laughs> um, and so I made a decision a while back that when I had shows, that, that I would use that name with uh, an identifier. And so this will be news versus nature golf. Yeah. That's both, okay. you know, for the yeah. Gulf Coast location. Yes. And also for that growing divide yeah. that's happening. Right well, now. I got to say, it, truly, I'm not the only one that was impressed with what you started back then when we had that meeting, uh, you've won numerous awards, uh, the big show, uh, I, I can't even remember some, you've just been uh -huh. so, it's so successful uh -huh. with it, and it's no wonder, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's impressive, so I can't wait for this show, uh, mm -hmm. thank you. and uh, Dennis made a great choice uh -huh. in you in, so... But yeah, these are these are works in progress, and so I'm looking at them as a whole, and um, yeah. they're both painting and drawing media, and I'm trying oh, yeah, to yeah. work them up kind of together. 
Well, I want to thank you for letting me uh, come into your space and showing us um, what you do, what you've done, and what's coming. Um, I think this is what this is all about, is, is sharing with uh, the community um, the amazing talent they have, the, the talent I have in my neighborhood. <laughs> And so, Sharpstown. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, what was the name of it? Uh, uh, that um, Havel and uh, oh, Rutten. oh, Sharp. 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 It Havel was Sharp. Oh, yes. just, it was just a few blocks from we were so between thrilled. our houses, basically. Yeah. <laughs> it's just outside the loop, really. It's not far. But yeah, I'm. Thank you. It, it's been an honor to be here with you, and and. Uh, I appreciate it. Well, thank yeah. you. I mean, I sure. appreciate your artwork and your insight <laughs> and your friendship. You're really <laughs> fantastic. And so important that support uh, system um, truly is. Um, yeah. So I, I want to say to the viewer, of course, thank you for watching. And please, if you like this, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, the more numbers we get, the more people will see this. That's how YouTube works. It spreads it a little wider, you know, and, and that's the whole idea. So we wanted to go there. So, yeah, we're signing out until next time. Thank you so much. <laughs>